Hello and welcome to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside of a bun. The heparin molecule does something odd, and it tends to bind onto this yellow thing that we can see called uh, platelet factor 4. And after this binds, we get the development of antibodies in our blood against the heparin and the anti platelet factor 4 antibodies, like so. And as such, in heparin induced thrombocytopenia, we now have formation of antibodies against the platelet factor 4 and the heparin complex. And this usually occurs about 4 to 5 days after heparin exposure because we actually need time for our antibodies in our blood to actually develop onto what is perceived to be a new threat. Now, this, um, you'd often think, okay, well, that's not too big an issue because we saw in uh, ITP, surely the spleen would just clear it. We don't have to worry too much about it. But in actuality, what ends up happening is uh, once the antibody binds to this platelet factor for heparin complex, our platelets actually become activated. And from our previous videos, we actually know that an activated platelet does something very odd, and it starts spewing out uh, other factors that go on to activate nearby platelets, things like thromboxane A2 and ADP, which causes nearby platelets to become activated and start to form clots all over the body. So this is looking a bit like um, TTP all over again, isn't it? Now, these lots and lots of clots that are forming can then get deposited in the venous system in places like our lungs and the pulmonary veins and give us something like a pulmonary embolism or deep vein thrombosis, the former being quite life threatening. In the arterial system, they might get deposited in places like the brain or even the heart, giving us things like a stroke or myocardial infarction. So this, is a, this isn't something that we can, you know, take uh, on the side. Uh, this is actually quite a serious condition. So what kind of symptoms are we going to see? Well, at the end of the day, it's very odd to actually have any kind of symptoms. So uh, patients often tend to be fairly asymptomatic and it's often picked up on a blood test four to five days after giving heparin. So this is usually seen in hospitalized individuals, those, so for instance, uh, waiting to undergo a surgery or an elective procedure who have been given heparin prophylactically. However, if, say, for instance, we do have a venous system involved in things like a DVT, we might see patients complaining of leg pain or leg heaviness. In the case that it gets uh, lodged in the pulmonary veins, we might get shortness of breath and pleuritic chest pain, as well as coughing up blood in a process known as hemoptysis. And this is the classic triad of uh, symptoms that really should point to the direction of a, a pulmonary embolism, as this can be very life-threatening. In the arterial system, if we have a, a clogging up one of our coronary arteries, we might get an MI or a heart attack, causing central chest pain, and this may radiate to the jaw or down our left arm. And in, uh, if we have uh, the clot being lodged in one of the vessels in our brain, we might get signs and symptoms of a stroke, so things like uh, acute onset weakness, issues with our speech, or issues with our vision as well. Okay, so what kind of investigations are we going to want to do? So the first thing, as I said, this is an asymptomatic condition usually. So therefore, the first thing we do is a full blood count. And a full blood count often shows a thrombocytopenia. In fact, it should be suspected in anyone who has recently received a thrombin, uh, sorry, heparin in the last couple of days. Now, in order to diagnose this and actually stratify the risk for it, we can use something known as the four T's criteria. The first T is the degree of thrombocytopenia. The second T is the timing of onset following the administration of a heparin. The third T is the presence of thromboses. And the fourth T is potentially other causes for the thrombocytopenia. Now, the reason I haven't included this in the slide is because this is quite specialist. So just knowing, though, um, that we do see a thrombocytopenia and the diagnosis uh, depends on its relation to when thromb uh, heparin was given is the most important thing here. The next thing that we can do is do an uh, HIT antigen assay, where we try to detect the presence of the antigens, where the uh, activated uh, heparin and platelet factor IV complexes in the blood. Now, this is a highly sensitive test, meaning that it will pick up most of the cases up to 99%, but it's not very specific, meaning that it has a high false positive rate. And in fact, in order to rule out the high posit uh, false positive rate, we can do something like a HIT functional assay where we see uh, the action of the antibodies against the platelet factor IV and heparin complexes. And of course, we want to fully investigate any of the complications of this condition. So things like DVT, PE, uh, MI and stroke. So for that, we might do things like for a PE, we might do a uh, usually a CTPA, which is CT pulmonary uh, angiogram. 
and this is uh, often done in most patients who uh, are, have no renal failure and are not pregnant because it uses contrast. But if they are pregnant, or say for instance they have some kind of renal dysfunction, then we can do a VQ scan. In an MI or myocardial infarction, we can do some ECGs and troponin studies. And finally, for strokes, we can do a CT head. So how do we go about managing it? Well, we know that this is triggered by heparin. So the first thing to do immediately is to stop the uh, heparin as soon as possible. The second thing to do is to anticoagulate them because we don't want the formation of these clots all over our body. So we give a non-heparin uh, anticoagulant. So things like uh, direct direct oral anticoagulants, so things like apixaban, rivaroxaban, and dabigatrin, for instance. We may also use fondoparinu if fondoparinu isn't the thing that triggered it. And lastly, we may use something like argotroban. A very important thing to remember for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is not to use a vitamin K antagonist, and by this I mainly mean warfarin, because using a vitamin K antagonist, there's a really high risk of a limb gangrene going on, so like skin necrosis. That concludes the video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please feel free to share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one.